Right, well, we're here at the end of a long and sweaty game of football. Chris Wolfs at home, of course, the uh, bassist, singer, extraordinaire, drummer, actually, sometimes. He used to be, anyway. Back, back in the old back days. Back in the old yeah. days for <laughs> the wonderful, wonderful band Muse. But today we're seeing you as a footballer. Yeah. Please tell why. Uh, well, we, uh, I got asked to play about a week ago, actually. It's for the uh, Cystic Fibrosis Trust. So, you know, it's, it's a great way to raise money. I think, you know, there's obviously the pros here, a few celebrities, and then a few punters who get to pay to play. So, uh, it's been a great day. I've really enjoyed it. It's brilliant. Well, you have enjoyed it. And unlike virtually everybody else, you have played the full yeah. 90 minutes. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't think I would. I didn't think I would. I wanted to. I still think I'm 17 when it comes to football. <laughs> I, I was okay, actually. I was fine. I didn't didn't collapse or faint or have a heart attack or anything like that. So. And you scored a goal, I although although you kind of stole it on the line from somebody else, yeah, did you? Yeah, we'll, we'll have to check the replays for that one, I think. I, I, it. I thought it was going wide, so... You know, you have got you can't take the risk, you've got to get on the end of it, so I, I think it was mine. A goal's a goal. I'll, I'll have an argument with Darren about it afterwards. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, you need to keep yourself reasonably fit anyway, don't you? Because, I mean, you're a fairly active physical band. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I think when you're younger, when you're sort of 18, 19, 20, being in a band, you know, you can drink and you can party a lot. And uh, once you get to about 28, 29, your body doesn't allow you to do that so much anymore. So, uh, yeah, you have to keep relatively fit. I mean, we play for two hours most nights. And uh, you know it's a pretty physical show. Pretty, you know, music's very energetic, very heavy, and uh, yeah, it takes it takes it out of you a little bit. So you know, you try and be sensible, and you know, try and get in the gym now and again, and just stay on top of yourself, really. Oh, well, we're very impressed. It's very professional of you to play football here today just to keep yourself fit for I know, news, yeah, eh? yeah. <laughs> uh, so, no, I wasn't, I wasn't here for news today. I was here for myself. Purely selfish reasons, you know, to play at the ground like this is, uh, you know, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, really, and to get a goal as well, you can't, you can't beat it, you know. Now, you're playing at uh, Stamford Bridge, but uh, a little-known fact here, you are, you are one of, you told me earlier, three celebrities, <laughs> if you include the Chuckle Brothers, who support the great Rotherham United. Yeah, I'm sure there are a few more, but I, I don't know of them. I, I went to Rotherham United last week for the end of the season, uh, you know, obviously the game and the, the, the dinner and the players' awards afterwards, and uh, Chuckle Brothers were hanging about. They're, I think they're from Rotherham, and they're very well-known Rotherham United supporters. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's great, you know. I saw them at Wembley as well. We got to the playoff final You saw who? The Chuckle Brothers? The Chuckle Brothers, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was kind of sat up in the seats, and they were sat down in the Royal Box, so I was, you know... I was very happy Is about that, that right? really. <laughs> Hi, I, I'm a band member of Muse. Yeah, excuse me, the Chocolate Brothers are here. <laughs> <laughs> Reality check. Hey? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Now, I, I love the story about, about how you guys got together. I know it's a long time ago, but it was back down in Devon, wasn't mm. it? And uh, you were a different band. In fact, you were playing a different instrument, weren't you? Yeah, well, I started off as a guitar player, and then I switched to drums. I mean, that was kind of what happened at school. There was about four or five bands that all came about in the early 90s when we were at school. And, we used to sort of move around bands and swap instruments and we always used to play gigs together and you know the lineups were changing all the time so most most of us actually played pretty much every instrument um, but you know I think when we were about 15 most of those bands split up and you know at that point in time we were all doing cover songs and I think me and Matt and Dom although we were in separate bands the one common interest we had was to actually make our own music um, so their band fell apart my band was on the edge of falling apart and, and Matt and Dom came in one day while I was drumming and asked me to be a bass player and do backing vocals, both of which I'd never really done before. <laughs> right, you done um, anything else? Well, actually, I'd done, I'd done a bit of backing vocals from the drum kit like this, you know. Right. But, um, but yeah, that was it. I'd never, I'd never picked up a bass before, but obviously I played guitar, so... And did they know that? Yeah, they yeah. You? Well, they, they kind of assumed that because I could play the guitar, I could probably play the bass, and okay. they heard me do a little bit of backing singing, so... Uh, you know, at that point in time, nobody was that great on their instruments. I think, you know, obviously you get better as time goes on, but I think it was more the, the sort of drive to write our own songs and, and do something different to what everybody else was doing at the time that, that sort of got us together. So let me ask you, when you asked, uh, would you like to join our band, did you think, A, yeah, because I haven't got a band, it'll be fun, or did you think, B, yeah, because we're going to end up selling 10 million albums and become <laughs> a major stadium rock group? Well, in, in all honesty, I think at first I was about, you know, I thought, I don't know if I want to do this because I've got to leave the band that I'm in. So, uh, well, what's that, the name of the band you're in? Uh, Do you remember? Fixed Penalty. Uh, well, yeah, fixed it's a penalty. terrible band. And what was the name of the, the band that you joined Origi uh, originally? Because well, it wasn't Muse, we, was we, it? Were, we were called Rocket Baby Dolls when we first started. Rocket Baby Dolls? Yeah, but that lasted about six weeks because, uh, you know, as you can imagine, there was a lot of Mickey taking going on from schoolmates and things like that. The, the name actually came from a Japanese porn film. Is that right? So, uh, I'll tell you yeah. what, I bet they're not taking the Mickey now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So what's happening with Muse? Have you got a, 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 a tour going up this year? Have you got an album? What's happening? We're having a quiet year, really. Um, we finished the main tour for The Resistance back in December in, in Australia. 
And then this year, we're just doing a handful of stuff, really. We've uh, just supported you two in South America. That was seven gigs. Right. We're going to Russia next week. We've got two gigs in Russia and one in the Ukraine. And then we've got a handful of shows, maybe five or six in America in August. And, and that's it. So I think in October, we'll probably get in the studio and start, start writing an album. Now, you know, I mean, whenever we do these interviews, it's, it's so easy to say, can you believe what's happened? And of course, you can't go through every single day of your life going, wow, yeah. I can't believe what's happened. But we're talking about school days and, mm. you know, uh, swapping bands. And it's, it's been some journey, hasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the thing is, a lot of the times you don't notice it because things move up gradually. You know, you start off playing in the small clubs, you move up to the theatres, then the small arenas and the big arenas. But then you get to a stadium like at Wembley. And, and that's like the biggest jump you can do, really. And I can remember the first time we played Wembley Stadium, kind of walking to the, we came up in the middle and walked out to the stage. And I was kind of, you know when you're so nervous you could cry, you know, that, that's how I felt. It was just this weird feeling of being really nervous, completely overwhelmed by the whole situation and, and sort of pure excitement. I could have just broken down and cried, I think. Once we got on stage, it was just absolutely incredible. I mean, it was probably the quickest two hours of my life, I think. It just absolutely flew by. Well, you're just living the dream. You basically, well, you, you've just played at Stamford Bridge, which mm. is what most most men would yeah. like to do, even if they don't like Chelsea. <laughs> and here we are talking about, oh, yeah, just playing a gig at Wembley. I mean, it's just <laughs> the dream. It is, yeah, it is, absolutely. I mean, I think... Uh, you know, when, you, when you're a kid, you know, when you're in a band, you, you do anything just to play in front of 200 people, you know, let alone 75, 80,000 people. And particularly the summer we had last year, we did two nights at Wembley Stadium, we did two nights at the Stade de France, we did one at the San Siro, you know, all these legendary stadiums, you know. And as, as being a football fan as well, it makes it even more special. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, particularly Wembley, when we did that for the first time, I was just blown away. By Are you all place. football fans at Muse? No, just me. Just you. Which makes it an absolute nightmare trying to organise games on tour. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a few of us that play. Dom, who played today, is our tour manager, and then there's a couple of other crew guys that get together. But we, we started doing a thing on Twitter where if we haven't got enough players, I'll send a Twitter out get fans to turn up wherever we are and we always get really good turnouts and, and you get a bit of the crowd to watch as well. Well you must be the best footballer in the band then, you must be, sure. Well I have to be, yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't be difficult. You're probably the honest. only footballer I'm in the, the band. I'm the only footballer in the band, yeah. And Tom, who's kind of almost like our fourth member, he's like our old friend, he's been with us since the start and you know, although he's not been in the band, he's always been with the band. He's quite a good player as well, but he can he can make it today. So, so how long is it going to take before you tell the rest of the band that you scored a goal to Dirt Slam on Bridge? Uh, well, I'm seeing them tomorrow. I think they're coming to my house for a barbecue tomorrow. So, You're uh, going to have the decency to say, I might hello, see nice to see you. I scored a goal, goal at Slam Bridge. Bridge. Yeah, I think that's how it's going to go. I might, get, I might see if there's any video footage of it, actually. And just just put it up on YouTube for anybody else. Yeah, the problem with the video footage is that when you tell everybody it was a thirty-yard screamer, <laughs> when they see the video, it was you nicked it as it was going over the line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I want to watch it just to see if uh, you know if, if I did steal it from Darren, then I will I will apologise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. But Chris, I'll still claim it. <laughs> Chris, lovely to meet you today. Many congratulations for for everything you've achieved. It's it's a wonderful story, and uh, a long may Muse continue. Cool. Thanks to very much. Live and play Wembley and and one thing. Thing only you two should be supporting you guys. Oh, I don't know about that. They're, uh, One day, they'll be doing it much longer than us. They're, they're the kings, you know. You're the princes. <laughs> yeah. All right, well done, Chris. Cool, nice one. Cheers, mate.